And welcome into the Paul Farrington Show, our week three prediction show. Paul Farrington joined alongside Jack Weinberger, Robert Ziggy Ziegler at the University of Virginia, and Zach Bloomquist, the best executive producer in the game. Zach, you're moving cinder blocks. These they're making cinder blocks. Flex on them. Making cinder blocks and moving cinder blocks. What is what is that like for, for technically the thirty seconds? Is it, do you like that? Is that fun? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a good workout. I mean, have you driven a bobcat? Not fully yet. Wait, hold on, hold on. If you're making the cinder blocks, why do you need to move them? Why don't you just make them where they need to go? Because they're, they're concrete blocks. They're not like cinder blocks. They're yeah, like, so why don't, you, why don't you make the concrete block where because it needs the, to go? They're 4,000 pounds each. You can't yeah, lift that? So that's a great reason to... <laughs> you I, can't, thought, I, I thought you were strong. <laughs> no, you use a, um, a loader. <laughs> He's just exhausted. He's like, I'm not dealing with this crap. <laughs> you use a loader and you move it with the loader. All right, well... Since we're not the cinder block show, I mean, we could go on for for hours on this, but you want, I'm not I'm not opposed. We can keep going. <laughs> we we've reached our 1,000 subscribers to start the season. That was something we were very happy about, and we're we're hoping to keep going past that. So the best thing you could do still have yet to get a post about it, but yeah, you know. still you have to get a post about it. Oh yeah, oh that's on me. Um, <laughs> send it over to a friend. Send the show. Like the video. Comment on the video. Perhaps subscribe to the channel would be the best actually. Um, and just know that we are very thankful for every subscriber that we have. Uh, and three, we respond to basically every comment we get. We so. try to. We, we try to. And it's usually some form of me or Ziggy talking. And sometimes sometimes you could see, you could absolutely tell who's responding to each one. They'll be like, I think this. I'm like, wait a second. That sounds like me, but it's definitely Ziggy. Yeah. If uh, it was me or Jack, we'd go off the rails. Yeah. No, you can't have control of that. Oh, I'd be a full on <laughs> argument with these people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which wouldn't be good. It's always, always, always diffuse. Week three. You're right. It's right around the corner. We're super excited for that. We're going to talk, break down a couple of the big games as we've been doing for these prediction shows. We'll each pick a game that we're excited to see, and we'll dive into that a little deeper. We have our game picks coming up later, which is always, that's personally my favorite part of the show, I think, throughout the year. I love the game, game picks. picks. So much fun. Actually, second favorite, because right after that is the Jack half of the week, and my goodness, we have some excitement for this. I feel like Scott. you're, you're going to like this cat. We, we have some I feel excitement. Like you're going to like this one. I don't know it yet, but none of us know it yet, but. It should be pretty exciting. Let's um, let's start, though. We'll give Jack 30 seconds because we were supposed to go live after the Steelers game Monday night, and we apologize to any Steelers fans who were hoping, or Browns fans, who were hoping to see our reaction. We know Shane uh, commented on Twitter, and so we apologize to Shane in particular. But, Jack, you were you were a wreck throughout the game. You, you I mean, it was a highs and lows of, wow, we suck, we suck. This team is horrible. Pick it. We all texted at the same time, pick it might just be terrible after his uh, interception. And then after the TJ Watt recovery, the text from Jack was verbatim: "Super Bowl is on." Absolutely. So when you when you when you reflect on Monday night and the the turmoil, but also the joy that you experienced, wh- where do you stand on the state of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, it's a game of highs and lows. It is. It's a game of highs and lows. I do first want to say sorry to Shane. Uh, you know, we're supposed to go live, and he's a fellow Steelers fan. He was probably feeling that that well of emotions as well. I'll take the uh, blame for that. I was tired. As uh, no worries. No worries, no worries. Yeah, the, yeah. the game ended late, too. It ended at like midnight Eastern time, so totally fine. I do want to start by saying also, uh, Nick Chubb, love oh, the guy. That's you never want to see that. Never want to, I mean, that's just horrendous. Uh, never want to, you know, want to see a guy get hurt, especially to that extent. Respect for the man is through the roof. I think he's the best running back in the league. Hope to see him get well soon. And I, I will say, respect to Steelers fans, right? When he was like get, getting carted off the field, they started chanting his name. Like, it was nice to see a little bit of respect, even though this rivalry is one of the most vicious in the NFL. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Sad to see those guys go down, too. The, the toughest part is when you see kind of everything settle in at first, because there's shock at first, and it's like, oh, my God, I just blew up my knee. It, I, I want to talk, talk a little bit less about the Steelers here. We won the game. Oh, boy. But <laughs> we didn't look great. We had two defensive touchdowns. Nick Chubb went down, you know, but... We got a one and one on to Vegas. I want to talk about the Cleveland Browns because these Cleveland Browns fans, they don't like me and I don't like them, (laughs) but I just want to remind that these Cleveland Browns fans, who your owner is, who your father is, your quarterback stinks. And let's not play the what if game, right? Like Nick, Nick Chubb goes down. We had the lead when Chubb went down. Jerome Ford scored the go ahead touchdown. To all these Browns fans out there. We were missing Deontay Johnson. We were missing Cameron Hayward. So no what ifs. We're your father. 
You can't win in our stadium. Deshaun Watson, that man stinks. <laughs> he single-handedly won us that game. And boy, I love it. You guys are awful. Have fun winning four games, Cleveland. Peace oh. out. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Oh, there, there, there's no daddy? question. Yeah, y'all y'all might remember during the offseason, I was predicting a return to form for Deshaun Watson. I have never been so happy to be wrong. It, it gives me some like deep joy to watch this man absolutely collapse and Thanks. be humiliated on the football field. Pick six, <laughs> scoop and score, another fumble. Like he is just losing the Browns. You know, last year it was okay, their offense is all right if they can just get a decent defense. Now it's the opposite. I'm happy to see Deshaun Watson stink it up. Worst contract in NFL history. <laughs> One of the worst trades in NFL history. I'm stamping it here. Deshaun Watson's career is over. Let him know. Thank you, oh God. Goodness. Let him know, Ziggy. I, 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 Let I, I, him look, know. Look, I'm, not, I'm not so quick to, to write him off. A week ago, we were talking about oh, them. Do, do, do you realize any somewhat decent QB and somewhat decent oh, team sh- mauls us on Monday well, yeah, night. Jacoby Brissett lights you guys up. Anybody else with that bum Watson, they win that well, game. Well, you, you guys, yeah, I, I'm not feeling great as a Steeler fan. If it, it's what, you have two defensive touchdowns, I'm not talking about right? the Steelers. No, I'm no, oh, I know, Steelers. I know. I'm talking about the Browns. I'm saying I'm not writing off Cleveland just yet because a week ago, they... They manhandled off. the Bengals. That team stinks too. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll get to them later. We'll get to them later. I do want to put it out there just just to take, you know, the side of the Browns. Like, this team isn't built around Deshaun. It was built around Chubb in reality. I mean, no, no, this, this offseason, they redesigned I mean, everything that's what for I'm Deshaun saying. They're Watson. Win, they're now going to win three games. So that's with that more on a quarterback. Well, they, did, they did redesign Ziggy by bringing, they brought in some guys, but the focal point is still Nick Chubb or was Nick Chubb. I mean, if you listen to Stefanski, they like reworked the entire offensive playbook for Deshaun Watson last offseason. I was just laughing too when that idiot fumbled the ball a yard Jeez. back. Yeah, Jack Jack does not like the Browns. I cannot wait for these guys to you stink, Cleveland. <laughs> All right. I'll uh I'll start off. We we'll each go through a game here. Uh we'll have some discussion. Chargers Vikings. I'm gonna go with with that. I don't know if it's exactly the sexiest game of the week, but it could have been. It's not it's as sexy well as you. I mean, you're Thank pretty you. sexy. Thank you. Uh, season's on the line for both these teams. Justin Herbert, Kirk Cousins, both offenses have been awesome so far this year, but they've been let down by their defense, especially you think about the Chargers week one against Miami. Really disappointing. Then you can't stop Tennessee towards the end of the game. That goes to overtime, and you lose. Vikings, on the other hand, we know their story. Embarrassed the run game was just absurd in Philadelphia with DeAndre Swift running for 170 yards there's only so much that the offenses can do when, when your defenses are playing the way they are right now. Um, and we very easily could be sitting here talking about two 2-0 two and o teams, or at least in the Vikings case, probably 1-1, one one, but the Chargers very easily could be 2-0. and o. It's been disappointing for both, both fan bases. I work very closely with a Chargers fan, and he's just, every week he's texting like, what, like, what, what do I have to do with this organization? I'm like, dude, don't even start with me. <laughs> like, you have, you have no idea what. So... This game in Minnesota is big. I, anytime the Vikings are at home, I'm happy about that. And I think it's going to be very much what we expect. Back and forth offenses scoring probably into the high 20s, uh, maybe low 30s. Should be a really fun game. I will say this, though. I'm looking beyond it at the start. Because if the Vikings are to lose this game and go to 0-3, their schedule coming up, they're at Carolina, which hopefully you can win that. But then you have Kansas City... At Chicago, which despite everything going on in Chicago right now, still a tough place for the Vikings. 49ers and at Green Bay. So those are four games that you could easily be looking at a 1-6 and six Vikings team, a 2-5 and five Vikings team. If they're 0-3, I would not be surprised at all if the Jets start calling them up about a Kirk Cousins trade. And it, it very well could happen at 0-3 because this team is not built to win a Super Bowl right now. Even if they want to believe that, there's not enough around them. So what do you guys think about that? Uh, to start off, if they lose, would, would you go about selling Kirk Cousins? I know it makes sense, right? This this Vikings team, they're, I view it like this. I think they're stuck in purgatory Pur- with Kirk hell, Cousins. No, no, which is hell. You think it's hell which is yet. actually hell, between, football hell. It's between purgatory and hell. Like, they're not going to win a Super Bowl right now with their roster and Kirk Cousins playing quarterback. I think it would make sense to maybe blow it up or restart. And you look at a team like the Jets, right? They can win the Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Minnesota can. The Vikings would, would could use some high picks. The Jets don't need them. So, yeah, I mean, why not? The Jets come calling. I think I'd bite. Isn't it hard, though, 
to give up. When you look at the NFC North at the moment and you have Jared Goff and the Lions, are, are we're not really but convinced. I don't, yet. But I don't think it matters because let's say you make the playoffs, right? It's like a, 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 nine, a 10 and 7 four seed. What are you going to do? Go to San Francisco and... So you, you would rather blow it up than be the four seed and get... Yeah, absolutely, because you're going to get murked again in the playoffs. Yeah. Imagine okay. you go to Philly. You can't beat Philly. Ziggy, where do you come down on this as a fellow Vikings fan? Kyle Rudolph so, said it's worth the conversation for what it's worth. Eh? Yeah, well, just to put numbers on things, right? Very rarely do teams even go 0-2 and, and make the playoffs. Since 1990, about 12% of teams that have started 0-2 have made the playoffs. Past three years, 23 teams have started 0-2. Only the 2022 Bengals have made it. But to give folks an idea of how rare it is to start 0-3 and, and make the playoffs, since 1980, six teams have done it. Yeah, well, that's it. So like, it just it doesn't happen very often, right? So once you're 0-3, as you say, the season's over. Now, I think the Vikings should actually be taking calls now, but we can get into that a little bit later. Once you're 0-3, Kirk Cousins isn't signed long-term, right? It's not as though they've got a lot to look forward to. The Vikings, it's unlikely they're going to be able to compete in the near future. Why bother keeping Kirk Cousins if you can get a third or fourth round pick from the Jets? Give Kirk do right by him. Third or fourth? I don't want a third. I'm not selling him for a third I, I think or fourth. No, because you, 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 you got to keep in mind, that's for one season at Kirk Cousins, right? He's not with the Vikings next year. Yeah, We don't want him. No, no, but I don't, like, I, this is going to sound greedy here, but I, 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 want, I want a first round pick. You're, well, you're not getting it for 15 games at Kirk Cousins. But the Jets could win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins. Do, Without are him, the they Jets don't make able the to give a first round pick now for Minnesota? They Do could we, give a they give a future pick. I don't think they can give a first round pick for next year. So like twenty twenty five would be the would be the draft probably. But like, I think that makes sense because the Jets don't need a first round pick. You can use a first round pick. No, no, no but, but, the, yeah, but there, 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 there's no yeah, there's no mark. Like here's the thing, right? I In order they, to get not? a market for a player, you need there to be two teams bidding. Only one team's going to be bidding for Kirk Cousins, and that's the Jets. No one else wants to but go out and acquire this so guy desperate. for high draft. But it doesn't matter. Right? What matters is what the market is. And if the Vikings start 0-3 and, and are ready to blow it up, they'll take what they can get. I would rather... Here's here's where I come down as a Vikings fan, and, and any Vikings fans in the comments, please let us know. If the Jets didn't offer a first-round pick, I would say have fun this, this year with Zach Wilson, and I'd try and win the NFC North. Because the well, NFC North isn't, isn't good. I'd roll my roll the dice. I mean, also, yeah, make, make, make the Jets beg. Yeah, they, I mean, the Jets they should. The, the Jets they have wanna, a great roster. The Jets, like, hence, hence bringing Aaron Rodgers, want to win it now. And with Kirk Cousins, they can do that. I mean, and if the Vikings blow it up, you could look at Cousins gone. You could look at Daniel Hunter potentially gone for a first-round pick. There are a lot of players that could leave the equation in Minnesota. It's, I mean, you'll be looking at Justin Jefferson gone. <laughs> just stop. Carry no, on. No, look. Carry on. So here's what well, let me just tell you. I think the Vikings should be trying to trade Justin Jefferson now, and I'll tell you why. Well, you understand every Viking fan right now is 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 looking sure, at well, the screen saying No, they're they're angry. So let, let, let me explain Please, the reasoning explain. as a Vikings fan. I'm sitting back here. Justin Jefferson wants to get paid 30 million or more a year. Someone's gonna offer him this. But in order to justify that pay, you need big time production. Now we know Justin Jefferson can do big time production, but when we send Kirk Cousins out. Because he's either getting traded this year or he's sent packing next year. Whatever quarterback we bring in is not going to be able to get Justin Jefferson 1,700 or 1,800 yards because they're just not going to be throwing that much. It's not Jefferson's fault. He'll be just as good as ever, but you're not going to get that kind of production. Well, Meanwhile, Williams. you reverse Shoal Walker it. You get like two or three first round picks, maybe a few seconds, maybe a good player in there because Justin Jefferson is one of the true stars in the NFL. And you start your rebuild with a bunch of picks. I think it makes a load of sense to move on from Jefferson because honestly, if they couldn't get a deal done this year, I'm not sure how much he wants to stick around. Would you want to stick around on a crummy team with no quarterback? No, I mean, I probably would. You but. know, I've also gone full 180 on my Caleb Williams takes. I think he's amazing. I think he's going to be amazing in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> what changed? I, I, I think he's going to be like Patrick Mahomes. I, I was That's talking... What, all right. I was talking, I was talking to... Uh, to a couple people, and uh, they were telling me, like, it was my brother and my dad, and they were telling me, like, I was like, I, I don't buy this hype, really. And my dad's like, I mean, he's going to be really good, man. That was like, it. He's like, yeah, that he's, was like, it. he's like, he's That's like, he's like. That's all that it took to convince you. He's like, he's, he does things that Mahomes does and nobody else can do. And I'm like, yeah, so it's yeah, just like, you're right. Like, yeah, yeah, you just. Like, uh, we were talking about, I'm like, finally, right. like, the, the last straw. Yeah, it kind of clicked. Go, going back to Jefferson, a couple things, Ziggy. 
What he's, he, he's on track. What, he's on, what if you get rid of Cousins? You're 0 3, right? Jefferson stays. You have Jefferson, Addison. This this bum Mullins comes in. You go 0 and 17. You have Williams. You have Williams, Jefferson, and, and well, that's in an ideal Jordan world. Addison. That's in an ideal yeah, world. I'm, that's Cardinals. probably not going to happen. Yeah, it, it would be hard. I was actually big time rooting for the Cardinals this past week in the events that we possibly move on from Kirk and blow it up. A um, couple of things, Ziggy, and, and I, I think it's worth having the discussion. Like it's it's a crazy thought to just say trade Justin Jefferson, and I I wouldn't do it just to clarify. But when you're in the state of the Vikings with so many holes you, and you have a piece of that valuable um, that other teams would want at receiver, like Justin Jefferson, first off, is on track for 2,500 yards this year. I know it's two weeks, but the dude's, <laughs> like, dude's amazing. He's the best receiver in football. When you th- And by the way, Reversal Walker is one of the funniest things <laughs> I've ever heard about. That was hilarious. Life. The Reversal Walker yeah. trade. <laughs> that is amazing. What would a trade package have to look like for you to even consider a move for Jefferson. And immediately the first thing I say is, well, would I do it for three picks? Would I do it for three first round picks, Justin Jefferson? So I just looked up the the past few Vikings first round picks. Here's what we've had. If you go in order, would you trade Justin Jefferson for Jordan Addison, Lewis Seen, and Christian Derrissaw? I probably would not. I probably would not. Either. Even though Derrissaw is awesome, I probably would not. I'd think about it, but I probably would not. Yeah. Would you trade for Laquan Treadwell, Trey Waynes, and Teddy Bridgewater? No. No. Anthony Barr, Cordero Patterson, Xavier Rhodes. Probably would for that one. Oh, Xavier Rhodes is locked down. Maybe. Barr, Patterson, Rhodes. Like, I probably do for that one. But it's not a guarantee on these picks. And, that, like, I wouldn't even, you know, half these guys here, I wouldn't trade Jefferson away for, like, seven of them in some situations. It's it's just so, yes. like, four, I think, is where I would be, okay, you, you, you got to. No, like, but, look, here's the thing you got to consider. Jefferson wants over $30 million a year. You also have to consider paying all three of those first round picks is going to be less than Jefferson. Wants. I know, but Ziggy, he's the second best player in the NFL. No, so I, I get this, but in order for his production to justify that number, you need a good quarterback. And here's the thing: this is a background assumption I am making based on how this has played out. The Vikings and Jefferson both tried to get a big deal, big extension done this summer. They couldn't agree because Jefferson wanted more than the Vikings were willing to pay. We've seen what happens when you get into extended contract disputes with players, right? That'll be the Vikings and Jefferson next offseason. Jefferson's going to want the huge deal. The Vikings are going to say no. Jefferson's going to hold out. We'll hold the franchise tag over him. There'll be a dark cloud over Minnesota until it gets resolved. <laughs> I mean, there always or, is. <laughs> yeah, but why go put yourself through that? Alienate your star player. Maybe he'll just want out anyway. Or while he's happy... While your fans are okay, while you can get a monster return for him, you say, we appreciate you. We love you. We can't do right by you. We got to start over by JJ. Jeez. I, I mean, let us know in the comment section again, if you're a Vikings fan watching this, what would the price be for Justin Jefferson if one? Ziggy would do it. How many picks? How many first round rounders would it take for you? I need a minimum of two first rounders plus either a couple seconds or a future first or a really good young player. Okay, I met me like I a, we're talking like a standout rookie, like, like three or four first round picks for sure. Starters, I, I would, I would really start thinking about it for three first round. Three is when I would start thinking. Probably wouldn't do but it. Anything, Dude's amazing. Two first round um, picks, I wouldn't do it. Just here, I also pulled up the. This will take a second. The Herschel Walker trade, just for people to have an idea of how absolutely horrible it was for the Vikings. Um, we'll, I'll sum it up here. The Vikings got Herschel Walker, a third round pick, and then you know a bunch of a bunch of other really late picks. Um, Cowboys got Vikings first, second, and sixth round picks in 1990. And then they got Jesse Solomon, David Howard, Isaac Holt, and Alex Stewart, who they then cut. And by cutting, turned those, the Vikings didn't expect them to cut it. It was a conditional pick on cutting these players. That turned into Vikings first round pick in 1991, Vikings second round pick in 1991, Vikings first round pick in 1992, Vikings second round pick in 1992, and Vikings third round pick in 1992. So you got three first two three seconds a third and a six for and we had herschel, herschel walker, walker for three years and he didn't break a thousand yards once yeah so i mean look i would tr- probably i would trade justin jefferson for that you know i have a funny story <laughs> but about that's her- about it <laughs> I have a, can i still story for a second like two months two minutes story go for it then, her- then we'll go on to your team about herschel walker and well, now, you know herschel I mean, walker, now, they're on, now they're on the topic uh i was on vacation a couple years back in the cayman islands and i was floating out in the in the caribbean it was warm. It was nice. Did you meet Herschel Walker? Maybe. But, uh, and there was this, 
I was in my tube drinking my uh, pina colada, and the water was beautiful, so nice. And this this one guy come next back, to me come back to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me get back. This one guy next to me. So there's a big dude, but a little bit older, probably in his fifties or sixties, maybe. And we were talking about college football. He knew a lot about college football, and we were going back and forth for like an hour. And he was in the water all day. This guy just sipping on on beer. This guy was a beast. <laughs> and then he started talking to me about his old college football days when he used to play. And I forget this guy's name, but he was a linebacker for. Oh, okay. I was waiting. I was waiting for her. Show was he was a linebacker for BYU, and I'm like, who was you? Know, who was the best player that you you played against? And he said that. <laughs> He played. They played a game against Herschel Walker. Georgia beat him, and every time they'd meet in the lane, Herschel would juke him out, run over him. He was like 0 for 10 trying to tackle Herschel one on one in the open, in the you know wherever. And he's like, it was the fourth quarter, and they were down pretty big. Herschel gets the ball, and it's me versus Herschel, and I'm able to trip him up by the legs, and and I bring him down one on one. And he's like, that was the happiest moment of my life. <laughs> I tackled Herschel he's like, Walker. I brought down Herschel Walker that one. I was one for 11, <laughs> but I brought him down. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And he was worth quite a lot to uh, to the Minnesota Vikings. So, so we'll see uh, We'll see what happens with the state of the Vikings going forward. Vikings Chargers, though. I'm excited to watch that because um, I think the fallout could be huge for both teams. If the Chargers lose, by the way, Brandon Staley is in a lot of trouble. That you could. Oh, see no, they're, every, they're getting fired because yeah, they are all in this year. So, right, they're projected to be, I think, like eighty million over the cap next yeah. year. That that's you why I'm watching this. Games. The consequences of this game for the loser are are pretty drastic. And hey, maybe it helps them out in the long run. But yeah, it, there there will be fallout. Jack, how about you? What are you looking at? I'm, I got my eye on uh on that game up in uh the freezing cold tundra, Lambeau Field, Packers versus Saints. It's interesting to me because you have the Saints at two and zero, but to me, haven't really looked great. But obviously, probably the best team in their division. Looking at a potential three or four seed this except year, except your Bucks, maybe. True, except my Bucks. Uh, yeah, trash. Except my yeah. Then you got the Packers, and I want to veer off towards Jordan Love in a second. But to me, this has looked like a decent team. They murdered the Bears. I don't think you got the problems with Chicago right now. But the way they murdered them on the road week one. Then you go to Atlanta against a team. Desmond Ritter was he thirty zero at home in, in his career? He doesn't lose at home that bad. <laughs> they were up by twelve points in the fourth quarter. Love looks decent, and I think it was the defense in the fourth quarter on those last three drives, and Atlanta scored a touchdown, field goal, field goal. I think the defense let them down a bit. Well, Love, they, Love was good too, but in the fourth quarter, Love was bad. 0 for 6. Yeah, but I just still, 6. but you, you won't stop your green, but they couldn't get it. Yeah, so or 1 for like, down, I'm saying. Like, like they, yeah, it was a right. complete meltdown. But I think they should be 2-0, and and this is a winnable division, the NFC North. Both teams here, winnable divisions. Winner of this game... I think it's a pretty decent win, regardless of who, of who wins it. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, I I look at it like similarly to you. I, I'm not. I haven't been particularly impressed with New Orleans against Tennessee or against Carolina in, in their uh, weeks one two matchups. They're just right now a little bit better than the average teams in the league. So I, I'm, I haven't been impressed going into Green Bay now. That could change my mind a little bit just because that's a tough environment and Green Bay's a, a tough one regardless. Team. Yeah. Um, you said you wanted to go to Jordan Love. And I actually wanted to ask you guys a question because I'm looking at Love, and it's really funny. Ziggy, during the Atlanta game, when the Packers got the ball back with about a minute left, text in our group chat, the, the curse right now that we have, and it, it is such a burden on, on my shoulders, I feel like, that the Packers videos we've been putting out have been doing really well. It's By far Packer, our best content. A lot of Packers fans out no, there. Packer, and here's, the, here's the, I love Packers fans. Like, I... I hate the Packers, but I love Packers fans because, and it's it's infuriating. They're all so damn nice, uh, and then now they're helping out the show. You see, Ravens fans suck. But Ziggy texts with about a minute left. I'm like, all right, great, great, great. We're gonna, they're gonna lose. He's like, you know, if Jordan Love goes down and gets a field goal here and wins the game, when we put out this video, we might get to 10,000 subscribers because yeah. like people are just I, gonna watch that. And I, I like, I'm sitting there looking at the television. I'm like, oh my god, he's so right. Like what? I, I, I rooted against them. But I just knew in the back of my mind, like, if they win this, like, this is good for the show. The Falcons kicked a field goal to take a lead. And I, I was somebody with a ticket on the Packers in that game. So I was watching it. And I'm like, all right, Jordan Love, let's go. Let's see what you got. Then I texted in our chat. Wait a minute. Jordan Love, let's see what you got. 
And Zig, that's what Ziggy, that's said, what Ziggy, that's what Ziggy that. sent that text. If he goes down the field here, we're getting subscribers. But here's the thing with Jordan Love. Early on in the season, or preseason really, we were talking about him, and, and we were harsh on him. We were very harsh on him. We didn't believe that he would come in and be a good quarterback. Just from what we'd seen, from what we'd heard, um, we weren't believers. And the expectations for Jordan Love, it's not to be Aaron Rodgers. It's not to be Brett Favre. It was whether or not he'd actually just be a starting level quarterback in the NFL. And so far, the answer has been pretty resoundingly yes. Um, you can look at certain statistics. Packers fans, we're going we're gonna to try and take a non-biased approach here. So we hope you appreciate that because it kills me to say all this. But he's leading the league in passer rating. He's highest in the league. That's a, a great number to be in, in front of. At the same time, he's third worst completion percentage at 55.8%. So there has, it's, it's been, he's looked good, but there are some numbers that say, like, hold on a second. He still has to develop a little bit more. Like when, he, when he's comfortable and he's making intermediate short throws, he's accurate. But sometimes things go a little awry so far in these first few games. I, I see Jordan Love, though, right now as someone who doesn't have a full unit around him. Aaron Jones out. Christian Watson out. Elton Jenkins out. David Bakhtiari's been out. So it's hard to fully judge and criticize. But right now, where do you guys come down on, on how, how much do you believe in Jordan Love making this team not only an NFC North contender, but maybe like a little bit of an NFC threat. How much do I believe in Jordan Love? I think the answer is not a ton. But the good news is that Jordan Love isn't the only person that matters. The person who's been most impressive, I think, actually has been Matt LaFleur. I was saying all offseason, right? People are forgetting that this guy knows how to create a great offense. And Aaron Rodgers had his own likes and dislikes that sort of stopped LaFleur from functioning the way he wanted to. When you look at the fact that the efficiency stats for Jordan Love, like passer rating, EPA, are yeah. off the charts, and things like his completion percentage are really bad, this tells you that he's operating in an offense that is built to help him out. Yes. He's got a great run game. His receivers are starting to get healthy. They're calling good plays. You know, of course, like there are issues. The run defense isn't great. Like there are problems in Green Bay, but the offense is operating well. And even though I don't think Love is a huge ceiling raiser, he's got good legs, he's got a solid arm, he can execute the play. I think there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about this Packers offense, even if you don't think Jordan Love's all that good. Probably have the best defense in the NFC North as well, despite the concerns you said. The NFC North defenses are really bad. So if Jordan Love is you know, an average quarterback, given the, the schemes he's been put in so far, and given the guys who will be coming back, like, it sucks, but the freaking Packers might be the pick right now to win the NFC North. I mean, I thought Jordan Love has looked decent enough where this team absolutely can get the number four seed in the NFC playoffs. Maybe the three. So I think they, they can beat the Lions, Vikings, and Bears for sure. Like, I, like the Bears, for example, I think Justin Field's terrible. But I think oh, it's, been, but, it's, been, it's been Chicago. You really can't have had, you could not have had a worse start to the season than what they have right now. I mean, Jordan Love to me already looks better than Fields. I mean, I think oh, there's hope third, for the He's play. third best quarterback in the NFC North right now. I, the thing is, and this is why I saw this last week. And again, he'll get better. It's his second career, second career start, right? Third career start. Well, he it was his third last because of that Chiefs game. Right, right, right. So second start this year. On the road, the stadium's getting loud, and you got to have a game-winning drive. And he did nothing. And it's something like that for a young kid like Love. I don't trust him yet. Let's say they get to the playoffs, which they could, and you go on the road to a team like San Francisco or Philadelphia, whoever. I don't know if I trust him there. So I think the ceiling is capped. But Jordan Love, so far to me, looks good enough to take his team to the playoffs. If, if And the, the crazy thing is, in that Atlanta game, you're, you said you're, they're up 12 points to start the, the fourth quarter. If things just go a little differently, again, he was 0 for 6 passing, really? messed up the fourth down, missed some open guys. On, it was a third down where he missed an open receiver. Like There were a lot of missed. Everything went wrong, basically, for Green Bay in that fourth quarter. If they win that game the way they normally would, most teams would in the situation, we're sitting here and it's a it's a different story about the Packers right now. We're we're saying like, oh my God, these like they hit the jackpot. He had a bad fourth quarter, for sure. But it goes on both sides of the ball. Again, like I said before, if if those last three possessions, the Packers stopped the Falcons one time, they win the game. Yeah. And prop props to Desmond Ritter too for for getting them down the field, yeah, even though he was sure. up and down throughout the day. So yeah, and props to uh, Bijan Robinson for getting him down the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Green Bay wins this game though at home against the Saints. I tend to agree with you. I think it'll be a good. I don't think it's this is a blowout or anything. I don't think the Saints are a bad team, but right in Green Bay, whoever was home for this one is who I'd lean towards. Yeah, uh, but and that's a win for the Packers though because early on in the season, 
I'm sure a lot of Packers fans weren't sure that this game would be one that they'd give a W to. Yeah, well, these are both teams of a lot to prove, right? The Packers, they're trying to prove they belong in the NFC North. The Saints, they're trying to get a weed in the NFC South, where three teams are 2-0 and for some reason. Yeah. So, yeah, it, this should be a good game, I think. So we'll see. And, and you're right, Ziggy. We'll see if some of those, those luck plays that Love's had, because there have been some fortunate moments for him so far. That's why his pass rating so high. No interceptions. Only quarterback with three plus touchdowns and no picks this year. If things turn a little bit, start turning the football over, we'll see exactly how how much he could come back down to earth. But he's been it's been a great start for him. Packers fans should be excited. You have a great shot. It sucks. You, one more thing. You put on that that Packers uniform as a quarterback. Like I'm, I mean, I'm so certain. Like I'm so certain that if like he put on like a Browns uniform or a Lions uniform, or be over. Jazz, he'd be atrocious. It'd be over. But it, yeah, but, there, there are black but, cloud franchises, and then like, I, what do we even call these? Like, like, like golden. I, I don't know. We'll think of a name for. We'll it. think of something. We'll yeah. think of something. But they're, they're the opposite. The black cloud franchises. That's what that's what the Packers are. It's like the Steelers. Blue sky friend. Time. Yeah, we're a blue sky friend. Blue sky. Blue, blue sky, sky franchise. franchise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Ziggy. How about you? What game are you? have circled this weekend. We talked about them a fair bit in the last segment, but I do think that just like last week was exciting, the Lions-Falcons game is going to generate a lot of excitement this week. Both teams that uh, the Falcons won, the Lions lost a really close game, both of them. Mm -hmm. And these are, again, teams of a lot to prove, right? The Falcons are 2-0. and They're getting absolutely no respect. People are saying Desmond Ritter is no good. The offense is too run heavy. The defense isn't going to be able to perform against a really good offense. And the Lions, you know, they beat the Chiefs. That's great. But then they lose in overtime to another NFC contender, one of the teams that you really hope they can beat if they're trying to overcome their history. This is a big game in Detroit next week. Yeah, no, it's you're you're completely right. And Atlanta, I could start with them because I'm watching the Falcons. I think they're okay. I'm still not convinced on Desmond Ritter. I know a lot of Falcons fans got up in the comment section saying, oh, you guys know nothing. Wait till week three. We're coming back. But objectively, when you watch that game, Desmond Ritter made a lot of mistakes, and he got away with with most of them. Jair Alexander had a pick six bounce off his hands. It's a lot of moments where you question Desmond Ritter's decision-making. But if he can just be good enough, get the ball to B. John Robinson, give the ball to Tyler Algier, get Pitts in space or Drake London a jump ball, the Falcons are good enough to absolutely make a run at the NFC South. And then you could, on top of that, you look at, like, I know, I know it's not great to always go to schedules, but I just took a peek at it. And they go to, they go at Detroit. They go to Jacksonville. After that, they have the Texans, Commanders, Bucks, Titans, Vikings, Cardinals, Saints, Jets, Bucks, Panthers, Colts, Bears, Saints. Like, there's not one game there. That you look at and say, oh, they definitely lose that. Like they, yeah, that's they're and all. Then, like, like I know, I know. Again, schedules is not what you want to look to because we're so early in the season. We don't really know teams, but that, based on what we've seen so far, like this Atlanta team could end up with 10, 11 wins, rather easily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, last week, I don't think that rookie year, Desmond Ritter, wins that game. I know you have Bijan; he was a huge help, but Ritter's looked improved at least a little bit. Oh, and a, couple, I, a couple of throws are big, and he made some. I made a really impressive throw. I can't remember who it was too. I think it might have been London in the fourth quarter, late on one of their scoring drives. Like, yeah, like there is improvement. That's still not there yet. But this under- this is a huge game because he beat the Panthers at home. The, the Panthers stink. You should have won that game, like they did. And now you come back into the Packers. Like, all right, two and zero. Let's see what we can do. And now you have a test. Your first road game at a team who, who people love. This is a really, really, I think I'm on the bandwagon for the Falcons if they win this game on the road. Ziggy, if they go into Detroit and, and beat the Lions, would you move the Falcons up a tier in the NFC contender list? Absolutely. I mean, what the Falcons have to show right now is that they can beat teams that are decent, right? The NFC only has a few really great teams. I don't think anybody's expecting the Falcons to reach like the 49ers, Cowboys, Eagles, maybe Rams level. But, you know, you look at the teams below that, right? Like the Seahawks, the Lions, I don't know, like the Saints. We used to be there. (laughs) Yeah, the the Vikings, I don't think are there anymore. Whoever else you want to throw in there. Like the Lions are probably the best in that next tier of teams. Yep. If the Falcons are able to go to Detroit, right? A Detroit home crowd that's going to be hyped. You know, they had a disappointing week last week. They're trying to bounce back. 
they can have a functional run game. Desmond Ritter makes a couple good passes. The defense plays just a little bit better, right? They rattle Jared Goff. They get a little bit of pressure on that stout Lions offensive line. Yeah, absolutely. They could get something done. They could move up a tier. And they know who they are. They're at fourth most rushing yards at 170.5 per game this year. Like They know their identity, and Desmond Ritter knows their identity. So work your game plan to, to around that, the way they have been, and see what happens. Just real quickly on Detroit, their, uh, their offense is completely fine. Exactly what we thought. Third most yards per, per game, 393. Tenth most points, 26. We mentioned this in the reaction show. The defense, only one sack on the season so far. Their 22nd most yards given up, 28th in points. They were supposed to take a jump. Now, let's be fair, there have been some injuries. But this is a game, if you're the Lions, you want to shut down the Falcons. This the is, Falcons are a team yeah. that should not... The Seah- Seahawks have a really good offense. Falcons don't really. Extremely one-dimensional, like we just said. You want to shut them down at home. And if Atlanta comes in and pushes you around, that's going to make me question Detroit a whole lot more than the loss to Seattle did. Oh, absolutely. This is a huge game for Detroit. The hype coming into this season, if you know... It's so funny that they lost to Seattle. If you now lose your first two games at home, like they lost to Seattle. Seattle's a good team, but again, a game I'd like to see you win. Like with all the hype coming into this season on the Lions, I want to see you win that game at home against a team you could be battling for with for a a potential wild card spot, like last year. <laughs> Detroit fans had ski masks on. What they had, like the, the blue yeah, mask. Yeah. Like, when's the last time a Lions fan's been excited for anything? You go out and lose that game. It's, you know, the turnovers, of course, the two big ones from Goff and Montgomery turn that game. But if, if they now lose two games at home back to back and start one and two against teams that they're favored to beat, I, I, I'm. I'm losing a little bit of confidence. Not big time concern, but it's like it raises an eyebrow. Yeah. Okay, the, uh, the last well, game. One, one last thing yeah, about yeah, the Fal- Fal- Falcons before we move on. I know that the Falcons got a lot of hate in the offseason for the Bijan Robinson pick. I was one of them. Same. I'm still a little skeptical, but oh. I will say this. I'm, I'm ready to is, take my victory tour. Not he yet. is exactly ass advertised, right? He's already He's looking amazing. like. I mean, it's not. The hope when he got Bijan Robinson was he could turn negative plays into positive plays. He's not doing that. He is turning negative plays into explosive plays, right? I mean, I think there was a particular play. Uh, it, like Desmond Ritter threw him the ball as he was being blitzed. He caught it pretty close to behind the line of scrimmage. And immediately there was a Panthers defender right in front of him. Jukes that defender, runs through two more guys, gets a touchdown. Almost any running back in the NFL takes a hit for a loss there. Instead, you get a touchdown. Bijan Robinson is a game changer for the Falcons. I owe a little apology. He has played as well as anyone could have expected him to. Maybe even a little better. There, there, are, there are guys who you give them the ball and watch what happens. We mentioned there were Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, Christian McCaffrey were the guys we said. Those guys, and, and Nick Chubb's probably, I'll throw your guy in there. But there are certain guys who are just difference makers at the running back position. And, and Bijan, so far, you know. Feel pretty good about it. It's week two. Uh, it's week two. It's week two. It's week two. It's week two. Okay, Zach, how about you? Uh, we'll, we'll touch on this one quickly and then get into our game picks. Uh, we already know where we're going. We're not going to the Mile High Stadium this time. Uh, last time we went to the Mile High, they, they upset us. But this one's <laughs> played in the hard rock. Was that last year? That was last oh, year. Oh, it was a revenge game. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. revenge spot. For What's Miami? the line? Six and a half? Spot. The line right now in Miami is six and a half. Yeah, they're going to destroy them. And they're going to destroy them. Yeah. It, it seems like it's getting chaotic in Denver right now. I don't now. know what you're saying this game. Well, well, I think Denver goes gets blown out. I think no, no, you know what I have to say about the Broncos? They they stink. Yeah, they like, stink. Like, like Broncos fans are, are sad right now. I work very closely with, with Liv's a huge Broncos fan. They, they're bad. And I said this to her. We were, we were arguing about the Vikings and Broncos. Like you can believe, you can try and believe in Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. After they get murdered by the Dolphins, I think everyone's going to start to say like, okay, this is on life support, this relationship, this team right here. Like, watch them play. I know that they had the explosive first half, or at least most of it, till the Russell Wilson fumble, but they're just not good. <laughs> they're not a good football team right now. They stink. And when I see Sean Payton come out, he's saying, there's a number of drives where we're late with personnel getting out of the huddle. We took a while. I mean, that's gonna that's got to change. We burned timeouts in the first half that I'm not used to doing. We've got to be better. I've got to be better. Russ has got to be sharper with getting the play out. Guys are talking about play calling issues and breaking the huddle too slow. Like that shouldn't be a problem by week two of the season. I don't care with the new coach. Like that that can't be happening. 
And when I'm seeing that as one of the primary issues beyond just getting the ball to the receivers and not getting sacked seven times the way Russell Wilson did, I, I'm out. I'm fully out on Russell Wilson. I, I think before, it's over. For Jack, o- Jack Oaks. Wasn't that a big thing that Pete Carroll said last year with Geno Smith when he had a good year? Wasn't that like... Like the big thing he said, like he was like, "Oh, like somebody actually like reads the play calls properly." Oh, did I missed that. Say that I missed that if he did. I forget. I, I, don't think, know. I think he said that last year with Gino. Wow. What about you, Ziggy? Are you or Jack? Did you say? You uh, want to say something? Yeah, I was. Just, I was just say, you're up. What twenty one three in your home opener, and you allow a Sam Howell led Commanders team to come back, score thirty five points, and beat you. That can't happen. I mean, I'm jumping ship. They're gonna go and get murked by the Dolphins. How are they gonna stop that? It'll be 35-14, and they'll be 0-3, and that'll be it. Boy, don't you think the Broncos wish they kept Ejiro Evero right now? But they begged and pleaded for him to stay as they have to go and face obviously the best offense in the NFL. The, the defense has not been good for the Broncos, right? People talk a lot about the offensive woes, and there have been a lot. But the defense has not been good at all. And you think about if they lose... They start 0-3. The Broncos started 2-1 and last year. And Sean Payton in the offseason was talking big game about how that was the worst coaching job in NFL history. I will tell you, I don't know what's going through Sean Payton's mind right now, except one thing. Sean Payton does not think Sean Payton is the problem. Oh, Anything yes, else might 100%. be, but he is not. And what that means is if they start 0-3, we talked about the numbers earlier in like the Vikings Chargers segments. Uh, if you start 0-3, you are almost guaranteed not to make the playoffs. Things will go off the rails fast. The Peyton-Wilson relationship will sour even more. And I'm not sure how it'll end up, but I would not want to be on the Broncos and have to play through that. I mean, even the way, even the problems he's talking about having, like getting out of the huddle, he, he's mentioning things that are clearly not a Sean Payton issue. Like the, He's saying at the end of it, I've got to be better. But what everything he's saying is, no, Russ needs to be better here. Russ needs to be quicker reading this. Like these talk about the fumble, huge play. Russ needs to be better there. I think Denver's in a really bad spot. Like, they're they're cash strapped. They're not talented. It's it's gonna that's gonna be an ugly scene this season. This is also the Dolphins' home opener, which is the one game per year Miami where the fans show up. <laughs> so Denver has no chance. Yeah, the my and just just real quick on the Miami offense, quick strike. Like, they can do it all. I just found these fun. Four of their touchdown drives this year lasted two minutes and eight seconds or less. Two of them were six seconds each. The number one in points, or the number one in yards, number three in points, two is leading the league in passing yards. He's on track for like 6,000. They're going to murder Denver. I think Waddle And I'm excited off. for it because I'm, I'm tired. Sean Payton, cheating, cheating well, bastard in 2009. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Does Waddle, sure. he has a concussion? He's not playing? Yeah, I don't know if he'll play this week. Oh, and if he plays... That doesn't he, change my mind. I mean, you have Sertan up against Hale, and then Wild just freaking goes <laughs> nuts. <laughs> okay, uh, let's if get into in. our game picks. Unless, is there any closing thoughts on the Broncos-Dolphins? I have nothing more to say. About no. It. Dolphins, but... Go, go, fins up. Fins up, baby. Say, so, give a dolphin noise. Give a dolphin noise. <laughs> I don't know. That was a horse. That was a Bronco <laughs> noise. <laughs> no, that was. That was a day. <laughs> you know what? Well, screw it. Bronco up. Let's go. <laughs> let's ride. Okay, you ready? Broncos ready for some game picks here? Let's As go. always, it's my favorite part. That's not bad. My favorite part of the uh, the show right here, other than other than the cap. Let's uh let's cue the music, Zach. Let's do this. All right, game day style. Game picks. Game one. Giants. 49ers. Thursday night football. 49ers. Ten and a half point favorites. Who you got, Jack? 49ers minus ten, minus twenty, minus thirty, minus forty. Big home opener. San Fran. Good luck. Good night. Lights yeah. out. <laughs> 49ers. Next question. There's mm-hmm. nothing here. Yep, I got Niners, and I, do we all have them covering? I do. Oh yeah, not Saquon's enough. not playing. How are how are the Giants supposed to cover without Saquon? Exactly, exactly. All right, Titans at Browns. Browns open as three and a half point favorites. Browns fans, you stink. Your quarterback stinks. Sorry about Chubb again. Titans. I don't think the Browns' offense is going to be good, but I don't know how this Titans' defense is supposed to score against the Browns. <laughs> Like, I think the Browns will get some lucky defensive play. Their offense will be able to capitalize just enough, and they'll edge this one out. 13-10. I'll take the Browns. 13-10. Uh, I will take the Titans, but I think, you know, Watson has two rushing touchdowns. Okay. Uh, the Titans are my AFC South champions, but Cleveland looked really good in Cleveland a week, two weeks ago. 
So I'm going to go with them at home, and Dog Pound will be rocking rounds. Chargers at Vikings. Chargers, one and a half point road favorites in U.S. Bank Stadium. Come on, Jack. I love the Vikings at one o'clock. That's when Kirk Cousins does his thing. I'm going to take them close over the Chargers. Come on, I think it's re- I think it's really strange that Chargers are one and a half point favorites. You look at these teams, and it seems like they're kind of the same. But I'll say this: I think we've got better coaching. I think Kirk Cousins knows how to win the game. We've got the better offense. We've got the better defense. We've got a home field with fans that are desperate. I'll take the Vikings. Uh, I can't. That's the first time I picked the Vikings this season, isn't it? I think you took them against the Eagles, but you did, we all knew that. I mean, we all knew you. That was desperation. Um, can't have the Chargers winning anything, so Vikings it is. <laughs> uh, I get these feelings watch when I'm pred- predicting Vikings games, and they're pretty good. This feels like a win here. I'm going Vikings, big time. Score, score, score. Need it, score. Need, need it. it, need it, need it. Patriots at Jets. It's been 14 straight, I believe. That Garrett Wilson said that's insane. That has to end. Does it? This Jets team is done. They're finished. They stink. Pat's two tough losses. They win in MetLife this weekend. As I said on the phone with Paul earlier today, it feels like the Jets season is on the line, except it isn't because the Jets season is over. <laughs> Bill is Belichick over. owns New York. He owns the Jets. He owns Zach Wilson. We said it last week. Wilson has two passing touchdowns and seven interceptions against Belichick in his career. Christian Gonzalez is playing good. It is night-night to the New York Jets. Absolutely. Give me the Patriots. Nice. Uh, Zach Wilson will be seeing ghosts once again. Give me the Patriots. I also have the Patriots. I think they. I think they absolutely have yet embarrassed to see themselves. a lone wolf. No lone wolf. Yeah. What happened to the music, Zach? What, what oh, that music? Guys, sorry. We. Uh, it's a long day for Zach. Long, long day. day for Zach. It's blacking out here. He might be blacked out. We were also Are you blacked so, out? We were just also so intense into the pick. <laughs> like nobody noticed. Are you blacked out, Zach? Oh yeah. Too Texans much, much at Jaguars. Jaguars eight and a half point home favorites. I like the Jags to win and cover this Texans team is hot trash. <laughs> the Texans played the Ravens close for a while. I think you'll see exactly the same thing this week, but exactly like that Ravens game, the Jaguars are going to pull away as the game goes on. They're the better team on both sides of the ball. I got to take the Jaguars. Uh, Jaguars just has to be Calvin right. Ridley, right? Calvin yeah. Ridley all day. Two touchdowns, three touchdowns. Um, one touchdown. No, no, no. He's going to have. He's going to go for one fifty and a touchdown. All right, it's a big game. Look at right now. I have the Jaguars as well. Kind of similar to Ziggy. Stays a little close in the first so, half. Jackson so, pulls. So are we just a wolf pack? We're a wolf pack yeah, right we're now. Pack. We're a wolf pack we're right pack. now. We're hunting together. I mean, a lot of these games feel like they're easy. And of course, they won't be, but they feel easy to Oh, predict. the Texans will win that game on the road. Bill I don't know. Like, this is, yeah, I, I'll just say, like, there are what, like three games this week where there's more than, where there's double digit favorites? Oh, yeah, no, the lines are insane. I mean, the, the, the next two are almost a touchdown each. Bills at Commanders. Bills favored by six and a half. The Commanders are too bad of a team to start three and oh. <laughs> Buffalo's locked in now after that week one loss. I got the Bills, but close than people think. I think that if the question is whether the Bills will win by more or less than the Raiders game, Josh Allen is not scared of this defensive line. That might be to his detriment on some plays, but the Bills are more talented. They'll pull ahead easily. Um, As much as I want the Bills to lose, they won't lose. So give me the Bills. Yeah, let's go, Buffalo. Hey, oh, That's what Buffalo. I got. I got, I got bills in this one, but I, I also agree, Jack. Close. 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 Probably. We're sumo squares Close. out here. Yeah, sumo squares. <laughs> Colts at Ravens. Ravens favored by seven and a half points. Yeah, just don't see a world where Baltimore loses at home. I, 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 I got the... Uh, I got, I mean, I got, we're rolling through these. I, just, got, <laughs> I got Lamar over AR. I got the Ravens. But it, here's the thing. I think people are forgetting it's not Lamar over AR. It's Lamar versus Gardner Minshew. And we've seen Gardner Minshew is one of those guys. When he gets put in, he has one or two really excellent games. And then things start to slow down. I think that this is my big upset alert of the week. If you're in a survivor pool, I would not take the Ravens. I think that the Colts have a real shot at this. The Ravens haven't put it together yet. Give me the Colts. Okay. I, I thought right. I thought you were going to flip at the end. I'm, like, I'm yeah, a lone wolf in it. I just know it. Well, we'll see. We'll see about Zach. No, it's definitely the Ravens. <laughs> yeah, the Ravens, too. You can you hit it. Go for it. Ziggy, Ziggy's a wolf. All right, Falcons. We talked about this before. Falcons at Lions. Lions, three and a half point home favorites. I like the Lions. Hand the Falcons their first loss. Detroit doesn't lose two in a row at home. Yeah, I love this Lions offense. I think that the Lions offense is going to be just fine here. 
I don't think the Falcons defense will be able to match them. So give me Detroit. Uh, yeah, give me Detroit all day. Just a real quick question, or not question. I just realized aren't lines like yellow or ish? Tannish, yeah. Tannish. Why is why aren't why isn't their uniforms like a tannish yellow? I mean, I've always pondered that. Like, why is it blue? That doesn't make yeah, any sense to yeah, me. Yeah, I never understood the blue yeah. thing. All right, no. that was just my two cents. Now go ahead. We can move on. No, no. Is is, is a Buffalo Bill blue? I don't know. Like, like the Buffalo's not, not blue. I don't know. It's kind of weird. The Browns are orange. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Browns are named after a dog, too, so it makes no sense. All right, I got... I want to take the Falcons, but I, I do a, think the Lions are square with us. Be a yeah, no, I'm a square. 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 Wait, why are the Bengals black and orange? Oh, there you go. There you go. We lose credibility for that. <laughs> Saints at Packers. Packers favored by two at home. I like the cheese heads. Home opener. They're going to be loud. I like Jordan Love. I like the Packers. I hate to say it. So I won't say it. I think that Derek Carr and the Saints will be able to handle the Packers just fine. Oh. Um, I think this is the first time that Derek Carr is going to see a real defense for the first two weeks. So give me the Packers. Go back. Go. I wrote go down back, the Packers go. as my go pick back, earlier go. today. I'm not taking the Packers. Saints. Oh, but yeah, I hate the Saints too. God. Yeah, I you hate go. the Packers worse. I, hate, so. you hate I don't Packers know, man. Worse. It's close. But I'm going to go with the Saints. Just because I don't want to pick the Packers here. Broncos at Dolphins. Dolphins, six and a half point favorites. We just said we love the Fins on this show. Not much to say. Fins up. They cover fins two. Fins up, full sweep. They win big. Full sweep, six and a half. Full Go sweep. Fins. All right, Panthers <laughs> yeah, at go. Seahawks. Seahawks are six point favorites against Bryce Young and Carolina. I got the Seahawks. I think the Seahawks are a much better team than Carolina's a dumpster fire. Again, Bryce Young stinks. Seahawks. Again, Bryce Young, I don't think is playing. He's got an ankle injury. He wasn't practicing. <laughs> I mean, okay. If you Seahawks. were a Seahawks fan, I would sweat that uh, Andy Dalton is coming in to play this game. Oh, Dalton's playing? Yeah, no, Dalton. This is exactly the kind of game that Andy Dalton would win. I'll say, am I? Can I make a conditional pick on Bryce Young playing? Sure, I'm okay with that. If Bryce Young plays, it's the Seahawks. If Andy Dalton plays, it's the Panthers. Same. I agree. I agree. Okay. I agree. I agree. Um, well, it doesn't feel so weird that you're so much more. These are two teams I'm so much more scared of the backup than the start. Oh yeah, I think Bryce Young. <laughs> um, I'm never gonna pick up a quarterback or pick a quarterback that lined up in the wrong spot, and you're running back and to push you over to the right spot. So uh, give me the Seahawks all day. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you guys are, are crazy with this Dalton and Minshew stuff. I, the Seahawks are gonna win this game regardless. Yeah, they, win, they, they win regardless. I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not happier if. Andy Dolan's playing. Wait, real quick, did anybody see that video today? With who? With Bryce Young lining up in the Oh, wall. I missed yeah, that. No, I saw I that. I think you talking about Kirk when Kirk did that. Uh, Chicago at Kansas City. The ba- Man, the Bears. Uh, like We're not going to get into it, but it, what an absolute dumpster fire of a day. Just a day this, that it was. 12 and a half point underdogs at KC. This Bears team is not mentioned enough amongst potentially being the worst team in football right now. So I'm going to take the Chiefs and Arrowhead. Yeah, I don't know if y'all were following the Bears today, but this will be yesterday by the time the show is. But this team, there is all sorts of stuff going on. Braxton Jones, maybe their best tackle in IR. Their defensive coordinator resigning under mysterious circumstances. Justin Fields coming out and talking about how the coaching is not helping him out one bit and he wishes things were done differently. Things are falling apart in Chicago. The Chiefs, meanwhile, are finally getting warmed up. I got to take Kansas City. This might be the easiest pick of the week. (laughs) I mean, it's the Chiefs every day of the week. Yeah, Chiefs, and and I I hope they cover too. I, th- I think that twelve and a half is a lot of points. I can't remember. It's been like since the Vikings Bills years the, ago. The Chiefs can play two football games on a Friday and Saturday, and then come back on Sunday and beat the Bears. Chief, Chiefs will win, and they should cover this game. Bears haven't won a football game since October of last year. It's been a, a year. They stink. <laughs> the, the Bears they haven't stink. won a football game since Elon Musk bought Twitter. Yeah, and you know what? I, I'm I'm happy about it because all the Bears fans are. Like it's oh, he's Weston. super he's annoying. nice. No, no, no. I, Weston's great. But yeah, most, well, I mean, but don't get me wrong. Weston's still annoying about the Bears. Like Bears fans were del- are delusional. They, <laughs> you stink. Cowboys at Cardinals. Another twelve and a half point favorite for Dallas. Do we all have, do we all have Dallas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zach, you're riding the Cardinals yeah. again. I, I was almost right. Does everyone have I, them covering twelve? I half? want to take the Cardinals, but yeah. I, I'm taking Dallas. Yeah. Uh, covering? No, no. Ziggy, cover. Absolutely. 
I have no. the cover, yes. You don't? I, okay. I'm, All right. So we're splitting the, the Cardinals cover. Covering. Steelers at Raiders. Sunday night football. Las Vegas. A two and a half point favorite. I can't wait for this game to come on air. And I hear Al Michaels and Chris Collinsworth say, welcome to Vegas. Well, and it's Mike a Tarico. sea. Mike <laughs> and, see, and see a sea of terrible towels in Las Vegas. It'll be You're a, right. It'll be a third down. Jimmy G, will, he'll be, he wouldn't be able to hear because his, his, his own home state will be the opposing fans. I bet the Steelers. I think Pickle is good in this game. I worry about the fact that Minkah Fitzpatrick is hurt and probably not playing. He's a critical part of that defense. But TJ Watt will be the best player on the field regardless. If I'm torn between teams, I pick the best player. Jimmy G might not make it through this game alive. Give me TJ Watt and the Steelers. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't see Jimmy G doing anything against TJ. Oh, I want to take the Raiders so bad. You guys look so bad on Monday Night Football. I mean, the Steelers yeah, have looked give us our miserable. Give the us our flowers. Terrible. But you know, no, the Browns yeah. beat the Bengals by twenty. You know, you know what? I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll, ri- I'll ride with my boy. I'll go Steelers. But that, that was close for me. You, you guys, like, you guys, are you bad. like the Steelers? No, I think you're horrible. No, you, I think you like the Steelers. I, it's good for the show. <laughs> Eagles, four and a half point favorites at Tampa Bay. You know, I got in this game. My NFC South champs, Tampa Bay, gets put on the map on Sunday. Monday. Monday night, yeah. Monday night. What? <laughs> you heard me. Loud and clear. Baker the playmaker outduels Jalen Hurts. He's like, dude, I was the better OU QB. Get out of my city. Ziggy doesn't like that pick. So I'm going to say for Ziggy, he is the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what is this? No, we're, we're a serious show. We're talking serious. I think the Bucks will win this game at home. Yeah, okay. Give me the Eagles. Give me the Eagles by 20. I don't know. <laughs> what? Zach? Um, I ride with Jack. <laughs> yes. I think Chris Godwin, Mike Evans. Pop off. Obliterate. 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 <laughs> Get those eye patches out. Give me those I, pirates. Um, I would like nothing more than to turn on the TV Sunday night or Monday night and and watch the Eagles get blasted by the Bucks, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going with the Eagles. Would you lay the five and a half? Yeah, I would. Four and a half. <laughs> four and a half. Yeah, dude, of course. Oh, people know it's insan. It's insanity that we're t- the Bucks beat the Vikings and the Bears. Like, the Eagles are going to go in there and wallop them. Just watch. All right, last one here. Monday Night Football. Rams at Bengals. Bengals, two and a half point favorites. It looks like Joe Burrow, as of tonight, as of Thursday morning, will probably be playing. Hey, I'm going to bench him in fantasy. I think the Bengals win, but I will not be playing Joe Burrow. I think that the Rams have played really well. They've played like one of the three or four best teams in the NFL. The Bengals have a good offense, I think, once things come online. But the Rams have the two best players, Matthew Stafford and Aaron Donald. So I got to give it to the Rams, even going into Cincinnati. Wow. Okay. Um, if Joe Burrow plays, give me the Bengals. If he doesn't play, it's Rams all day. I think I would agree with that. I, I will go conditionally Bengals on Joe Burrow playing. But, man, and we could talk about this for just a second here. Um, if you if you throw the music down a little bit, Zach. I mean, great minds think alike. I think me and Zach had these same exact picks. Well, he said he followed. He said he, he said he go rides with his boy. What do you mean? We didn't say that. Me and Jack just think alike. I mean, just you, think you just said, I ride with my boy. Well, that's only I for the Bucks back. No, only yeah. Bucks. Um, Rams and Bengals, just for a second. Because wait, wait, wait. Did, was Ziggy the only one that took the Rams? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, you're right. <laughs> um, for Rams and Bengals, do you guys think that there is more to gain for the Rams winning this? Because people still, despite the slow start, people do still respect Cincinnati. Or is there more for the Bengals to lose? And they go 0-3, Joe Burrow banged up a little bit. Where where do you come down on that, Jack? I think there's definitely more for the Bengals to lose because the Rams have already gained a little bit of respect by beating Seattle on the road and then for the most part hanging with San Francisco. I think most people might see this team, okay, maybe they're not as bad as we thought they were. If they go into Cincinnati, yeah, it's a good win. But then again, like the critics might come out and say, yeah, but I mean, they were 0 2. Joe Burrow's a little bit banged up. If they beat Cincinnati, I'm looking at the Rams saying, like, all right. I'm just saying what I think most people might say. And also, the best this Rams team can do is they're going to fight for a wild card spot, Mm. regardless of anything. Cincinnati has Super Bowl aspirations. And if they're 0-3 and they lose two games at home, and Baltimore's going to be 3-0 if they beat Indianapolis, 
suddenly your back's big time to the wall. And it's like, wait a minute. This and is really, hurt. Yeah, this is really bad. So I, I don't even think it's close. I think Cincy has much more to lose here. Ziggy, you used to be a Rams fan here. You're a, uh, a former Rams fan turned Vikings fan. It's questionable decision making. But regardless, where, where do you come down? More to gain for the Rams, more to lose for the Bengals. I think the Bengals will be fine. Um, even if they lose this game, I think they might be the kind of the seventh team to make the playoffs. Oh, and three. But there is a whole lot to lose for them. On the other hand, though, I think people forget if the Rams win this game, you know, they're only one game behind the 49ers. It's not like the 49ers are going 17 no this season. Like, sorry, sorry, 49ers fans, that's not happening. The Rams will have a chance to win the division. And if they can win the division, Stafford keeps playing at an MVP level, Cooper Cup comes back. This is a team that has a real chance to win the Super Bowl. So I don't oh my know. Gosh. Look, I've been, I've been saying it, right? They've got I mean, you, great you, you talked about them being like worth a sprinkle at plus a thousand to win the division, like a seven seed, but you just said Super Bowl. If Matthew, I don't think anybody thought Matthew Stafford would be playing at this level, but he is, and he will probably continue to. Like, this is a good team. I mean, they the, have played like one of the best teams the, in the, the NFL. The offense in particular, I'll say, has been impressive with. Puka, 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 Puka Nakua, Kyron, 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 and Kyron, 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 Kyron Williams Kyron. now. Cam Akers is a Viking. He's gone. The, the, you add Cooper Cup back, and as long as that offensive line holds up, yeah, the, the, the problem with the Rams are, are the injuries. It's whether or not Stafford can hold up for the season, but they've been impressive. The thing with me is, is the Rams, for the most part, played a pretty good game against San Francisco, and I don't think San Francisco looked great, and yet San Fran was up by 10 with 20 seconds left, and it was a BS backdoor cover. The Rams are not as good as San Francisco. Like, San Fran's win- winning that division. But Cincinnati has aspirations to play in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah. And Go if on. you're 0-3, do, I th- do, do, do those vanish? I, th- I think they do. I actually, I, If they're 0-3, I'm just looking ahead here. You're, you go to Jacksonville. You go to San Francisco. You still got to go to Baltimore. You go to Kansas City. Go to Baltimore. You got to play us twice. You host the Bills. You st- I mean, those are still tough games. Like, they are... I, I don't. If the Bengals lose this, I don't. I don't know if they make the. I don't think they make the playoffs. I'll say they. I don't think they do. People are talking about shutting down Burrow for a week or two. I've also seen putting him on IR, in which case he would come back week eight. But from what I just said to you guys, I don't think that's an option anymore. Jamar Chase talked about in the off season. Oh, if he, as long as you're back by week five, if if they're zero and three or one and th- one three, whatever it is. With that schedule, I just said those teams. I, I think Cincinnati is in some serious <laughs> trouble right now. The week one loss, we're like, okay, you know, we'll get over it. But I, the, the way they've looked, the way that offensive line has looked, is the Bengals are in more trouble than they've been in since the Joe Burrow ACL injury. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's, it's not good. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if Joe Burrow got his bag and he's like, I really don't care anymore. That's it. Well, I, I, that's certainly not it. I don't know. Well, you guys, I'm trying to remember. The Steelers' hey. schedule is pretty... Ah, you, you look so bad. I was, I was going to question whether or not the Steelers would finish higher than the Bengals. I mean, now. we don't look... They look no better than we do. No, they don't. And that schedule is, I just said, Niners, Bills, <laughs> they, I mean, they got Ravens. mopped by the Browns. We beat the Browns. Like, let's say... That, let's just pretend they lose here. They could lose 49... I mean, you're talking about maybe like eight losses for the Bengals now. A team that won 12 games last year. 12 and 4. So it's it's not good. It is not good. It's a it's a must win for them, uh, but the Rams have Puka Nakua, so we'll yeah, see. It's not a must win. Can for they the stop the, the Bengals? You know, Puka Nakua has two hundred sixty six receiving yards this year, second most in the league, thirty five targets. I mean, Puka, Puka. I mean, that Puka. Matthew Stafford feats his wide receiver one like maybe no quarterback in NFL history. I know, I know. My fantasy team is not happy about Cooper Cup coming back, but it'll be fun to watch the Rams. All right, so there you go. There's. Our NFL Week 3 predictions, and as we always end, there is the Jack Weinberger Cap of the Week. Flip to the college side of the ball now. Yes, yes. I'm off a dub. I'm off a dub. The, the corn husky, oh, yeah, I'm Let's off just a celebrate dub. that for a second. I'm off a dub. Off a Nebraska I, win here. I'm seeing the board now crystal clear. I'm just going to take my headphones off for this cap. They're kind of hurting me a little bit. Go for it. Um, so this is real brief and quick, guys, this, uh, this Cap of the Week. I was just watching some of our clips, some of our episodes, and I realized we're doing a fantastic job on this podcast. We're really doing awesome. And I'm honored to be alongside you two as my, as my co-hosts. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And, and 
Maybe Zach. Wow, that's and, crazy. And Zach, yeah, yeah, Zach, that's and, and, crazy. And Zach is a producer. <laughs> that's crazy. I forgot but, on the website. Now but I forgot this, now. That's this okay. one, oh, yeah, we have a website, by the way. This one goes out to the man sitting to my right and the man on the screen. You know who I'm taking this week, baby. I'm going to South Bend. And I'm taking those Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I don't even want oh, the points. Baby. I don't even want the points. Give me Notre Dame on the money line in South Bend in front of a sea of green. Cheers, Big Paul. Game. Cheers. Big game. The pregame Dennis, baby. Let me see that jersey, Ziggy. It's the a big Irish one. wear green, baby. <laughs> we got, I mean, look, this is the biggest game in Notre Dame since 2005. It is, it is a massive, massive week. Those books can keep the points. I want the money line. I want the money line. College game day is there. Paul Farrington is there. Notre Dame by so many points. This game is taste pretty damn it's good, baby. It's a big baby. weekend to be Go a Buckeye. Irish. Go Go Irish. weekend. Go Irish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So you got... Are fighting Irish right here. I wish we could zoom in. We got we got Notre Dame mud. Too, oh, right the, is, is that a logo? I mean, oh, I'm, okay, so. all, all I'm saying is like if, if if Notre Dame wins this game, Headphones there might not be another Paul Farrington show. There might like not Paul be and I might get we might get so excited that our hearts just give out. Game over. So you should, you're just again. rerunning this Zach over and over again. again. <laughs> Let me hear it again. I, when, when you start playing the music, I I'm ready. I'm ready to be out there. Uh, you know we'll get it. I'm gonna you know, block out. You know I drove over today. This is on repeat on the car ride from my house. Oh, it'll be here. amazing. It's going to be rocky in Notre Dame Stadium. I'm excited to watch it at the bag. As long as we don't have 30,000 Ohio State fans there, it'll be ro- well, one way or another. It will be rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Notre Dame. Notre Dame outright by multiple scores. Sam multiple the man, scores. Sam the man six touchdowns. More. I mean, More. we are at the end of the day. I don't know if you can see it. We are a Notre Dame podcast. It, we are a Notre Dame podcast. Ziggy's rocking the green. Oh, we got it right we here. We got the Irish wear green the towel. Irish wear green. I bought my I bought my shirt over. We're ready right. to go. We're ready All to right. go. Th- we thank you guys Cheers. so much for listening to yet another episode of the Paul Farrington Show. As we said, we sort of have a website being made right now by one of our good friends, Jacob Stalin. He does great stuff on LinkedIn. Go where, check where out Where did Jacob go to college again? Oh, you're right. Where did Jacob go? You're right. So uh, let me just take a sip here. We uh, Thank you very much for listening. Go check out the website. Well, that'll be coming up soon, so actually you might not have access to it. But, <laughs> again, we are looking forward to week three of the NFL season. Another week of college football. Again, big game in South Bend. So just know we're, uh, we're excited for this weekend of football. We'll see you with the reaction show to week three of the NFL. Hopefully a Vikings win. Hopefully the Steelers are about to win at that point. And the Dolphins, of course, they're going to murder the Broncos. So we will see you then for Ziggy, Jack, Zach, and myself. Have a great weekend. <laughs>